ask for a better day for one of the top tier concours in the nation. It's the 20th annual Amelia Island Concours de Elegance. It's coming at you right now. Gang, I'm here with none other than Fred Roth, and we're standing next to his one-off orphan car, a 1954 Hudson Italia Coupe. Now, this is another example, Fred, of Italian design on American car manufacturer. In the case of Hudson, a little bit, a little too little too late, but wow, what a magnificent car this is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think so, too. Tell us all about the history behind it and uh, what the design cue is all about and all that. Well, originally the car was designed uh, by Hudson, and Hudson had their chief designer uh, come forward and, and uh, do the design work as a way to, to keep him happy because he was very upset about the design that he had done on the Hudson Jet, which was their compact car, which was beautiful when he designed it. And then when they uh, got done changing it and making it more practical and useful, it ended up being a box on four wheels. All that's left is the engine, transmission, rear end, and floor pan. Why Hudson? What does this car say about you personally, Fred? I mean, what, 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 what do you like the best about owning this car? I love Hudson's. When I was in high school, I couldn't afford a 49 Ford with the fenders back, so I got a Hudson and I had to defend my loyalty. That, so that you go, you were indoctrinated early and you're a real Hudson nut. Do you ever drive this or is it just too, too valuable? No, no, this is very difficult for me to drive personally uh, because uh, I'm having trouble with my legs and shifting gears. But what I did do was uh, I sold off most of those Hudsons I told you about and just kept a 54 convertible in this car and, and turned around and built an entire collection around this car, which is an American sports car. And so I have every American sports car built in the 50s in a little museum that I built at home in my collection. Well, Fred, thank you for joining us and telling us about this awesome vehicle. You're so welcome. Glad to do it. We're joined by the legendary Corky Coker of Coker Tire. He's in period outfit here, and we're standing in front of his 1914 Stutz Bearcat. Corky, wow, what a car. Tell us all about it. Well, thanks, Alex. Thanks for coming by. By the way, you joined me. I didn't join you. You know, we're, we're here. We're, we are creating a presence with an original Stutz Bearcat. Now, you know, Alex, today one of the most fun things that a guy loves to have is a sports car so he can drive and experience the road the handling, you know, the performance, the power, and all that sort of stuff. Well, in the teens era, Stutz was the king of performance. It was the sports car of the of the of the 1910s to 1919 era. If you were driving a Bearcat in the teens, in the 1910s, you were the top dog, right? Yeah, top dog or bee's knees or one of those sayings back when. 21 skidoo. 21 skidoo. Absolutely, I like that, Alex. You're right on, man. So, so this car is a 1914 Stutz Bearcat in its original state. You know, we've had to do, do a few things to uh, straighten up a fender or two. But you kept the patina, it looks fantastic. You know, the fun part about that is we can drive and, and we don't have to worry about scratching it. We don't have to worry about the, the, the nickel tarnishing or the uh, brass tarnishing or anything like that. We can drive it, we brought our uh, our picnic basket and we're going to have our tea here in just a minute and we do that all the time. My sweet wife Teresa and I own this car and we just have a great time and we're happy to share it with you on the car show. Well, thank you very much Corky, appreciate that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the mark of Stutz and uh, its history in Indiana? 
Well, Stutz was, um, you know, Harry Stutz was really a, uh, an amazing engineer. And, you know, the T-head motor and, and, and starting, starting the original uh, design was just a dyna dynamic uh, motor. Most of, the, most of the original Bearcats came with Wisconsin motors. Um, but Harry was uh, a very strong engineer. The steering, the design, and, and then later on, you know, in all of their, uh, their high performance cars, they have just huge, amazing uh, performance huge amazing design uh, so it's a mark and it's a, an icon in the automotive industry yeah there's no question about it Stutz has a unique place in automotive American automotive history Corky Coker thanks for joining us on car show TV well great to see you Alex Andrew loves his race cars, but I love fabulous 50s cars from the United States of America, especially the ones that were designed by Italians and then brought back over to America. This is a one of one. We're in the orphan car section. This is a 1954 DeSoto Adventurer II bodied by Ghia. Now you have to understand that around this time, Virgil Exner was hired as the stylist for Chrysler to make the Chrysler cars a little less frumpy and a little more exciting. Uh, what ended up happening was he shipped this over after the Corvette was built because everyone wanted to get a two-seater sports car. And so what happened was is that he sent it over to Ghia, especially to one guy, Giovanni Savanucci. Uh, Mr. Savanucci was also very influenced by the jet age, as was Virgil Exner. So what they did was they built this unbelievably beautiful car. It looks like a pouncing cat. It looks like a parade float for George Jetson. I mean, this is the jet age in 1954. You can see it has a retractable rear window, so with all the windows open, giving it the effect of a convertible. Uh, the lines of the car, the, the belt line of the car, act as fender skirts for both the front and the rear wheels. You see in the back, uh, the tail lights have the effect of being afterburners on jets. So it's all about that. Now on the front grill, it's almost like a free floating grill. And you can see strakes of chrome that go along the side all the way up into the front blinkers of this car. This had a 260 horsepower fire dome engine in it, uh, built again on a DeSoto frame. And um, what a magnificent piece of automotive American history this is. If you had to choose one car that influenced Virgil Exner the most for the forward look for Chrysler in the late 50s, it had to be this car. Feast your eyes, gang. It's knee high to a grasshopper. Or knee high to me anyway. Hi, my name is Doug Karen. I'm from Plymouth, Minnesota, standing next to my Bocar XP5, built in 1959 by Bob Cards in uh, Littleton, Colorado. And uh, the goal was, was to build the fastest streetable race car that he could do. Uh, this particular car here belonged to uh, Harry Hauer, and Harry picked this car up, drove it home from the factory in 1959, and started his first race at Meadowdale uh, Raceway in Illinois. And then I uh, went out to Riverside and Bahala, and then Augie Pabs drove the car at the uh, sixth annual Nassau race in the Bahamas, and then went on uh, with the car was on the pole at Nassau, had a little mechanical issue. But he finished second then at Road America in the rain, uh, also in 1959. And uh, 
We've restored the car. We found the car. There was an ad on Craigslist last year. We found the car. It was in pretty tough shape at the time. And we've restored the car to bring it back. And both Harry and Augie saw the car. Uh, and I've got some pictures of the car back then. Uh, last fall, they had a 55-year reunion of the team. And both Harry and Augie got a chance to sign the car for me. And, uh, and just about put both of them in tears seeing the car after 55 years and wondered what happened to it. Hey guys, I'm here with Jeff Lane from the Lane Automotive Museum. Now, not a whole lot of you guys know this, but I actually studied architecture. And when I was in architecture, one of the guys that we studied was Buckmeister Fuller. This guy was a visionary. Geodesic, domes, all kinds of crazy stuff. He was a guy that was designing stuff for World's Fairs. So, Jeff, tell me a little bit about what this interesting vehicle that you brought here. Well, it's a 1933 Dymaxion. It's a replica. So, Bucky Fuller, he built in 33 and 34, he built three cars. And so he was trying to build the car of the future. It was going to be streamlined. It was going to get better mileage. Um, it's a unique car because it's front wheel drive and it's rear steer and the motor's in the back. So it had all these really unique features. Unfortunately, the first car crashed going to the World's Fair. Two people were killed. So that really kind of dampened people's spirit for the car. He ran out of money in 34 and then he went on to many other adventures. So, I mean, this is really, really unique. What was his idea behind this? I mean, wh why three wheels? Well, he wanted to make it aerodynamic, so to be aerodynamic in the back and taper the tail back, you have to have one wheel in the back. And the other thing, he worked with Sterling Burgess, and he was a yacht designer. So, you know, most yachts, they steer in the back, so I think there was a little bit of influence there. But again, he was always trying to, tr he was trying different things to see if it could be, you know, make it work. So what all do we have in this vehicle? It's three-wheel drive. Uh, what's the drivetrain? How is it steered? Well, it's steered in the back. Um, the original car was steered with cables and a chain. So this car we made with hydraulic steering to make it steer better. But they're powered by 33 flathead Ford drivetrain, transmission, engine, and in fact, the front axle was the rear axle of the car. So he basically took the 33 Ford and flipped the power plant around, and then he built a body on top of that. Well, thank you very much for a little bit of the history. Now, this has got a pretty unique headlight in the front. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, it's just a single headlight, but it doesn't swivel, but it does have a unique feature because around the opening, there, it lets air through there, and that was the air conditioning for the car. So you put, there's a tray in there where you put a bag of ice, and the air flows across the bag of ice and into the cockpit, so you could have cool air on a hot weather. He had kind of like a swamp cooler going on in this car, very early air conditioning then. Yes. Again, another innovation. Yeah, thanks for joining us and sharing this incredible vehicle with us. All right, thank you. It's my pleasure. Hey guys, check out this episode and more on Roku and Amazon Fire TV on the Car Show Television channel.